All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to find the matrix of a linear transformation with respect to a basis B. Or if you'd like, it's called the B matrix of A. Here's what I mean. So let A be the matrix minus one, minus two, four, three, and B be the basis. So beautiful B be the basis three, two, minus one, one. And the question is, find the B matrix of A. B matrix of A. What does that mean? It really means find the matrix of the linear transformation T of X equals AX with respect to the basis B. Now, remember how to find matrices of linear transformations. For every vector in the basis, you have to calculate T of that vector. So here, let's calculate A of 3, 2 and A of minus 1, 1. So, A of 3, 2, well, that's minus 1, minus 2, 4, 3, 3, 2. And if you do that, you get minus 3 plus 8, which is 5, and minus 6 plus 6, which is 0. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, well, you calculated A of that vector. Now you just want to express it in terms of B. Think in terms of coordinates. So find the coordinates of this vector with respect to this basis. A times 3, 2 plus B times minus 1, 1. And we want to find those coefficients. And so for this, you'll see we just have to reduce a system. So do 3, 2, minus 1, 1, and then 5, 0. Fortunately, there isn't a very clever way of doing this, so just, just do it by brute force. So let's multiply the first row by, uh, I think, no. Let's multiply the first row by minus 2 thirds and add it to the second row because minus 2 thirds is the thing that transforms 3 into minus 2 and that's what we want. Then we get, again, 3 minus 1, 5 and then 3 times minus 2 thirds, that's minus 2 plus 2, it's 0. Minus 1 times minus 2 thirds, it's 2 thirds plus one, it's five thirds, and then five minus two thirds, it's minus 10 thirds plus zero, it's minus 10 thirds. But notice, this simplifies quite nicely. You can divide by five thirds, and you get three minus one, zero, one, five minus two. And then let's just continue row reducing, so we get so, I mean, it is in row echelon form, but let's make it into reduced row echelon form. So let's add the second row to the first row, and we get 3, 0, 3, 0, 1, minus 2. And then we just get 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, minus 2. What is that telling us? It tells us that, you know, A of 3, 2, which is 5, 0, equals to 1 times 3, 2, plus minus 2 times, five, uh, times minus 1, 1. And just like for matrices of linear transformations, all you do, you take those two coefficients together and put them in a column, so in a column vector. So in other words, we know that the first column of the B matrix of A is 1 minus 2. And then for the second vector, for the second column, you do A of minus 1, 1. Calculate that, so it's minus 1, minus 2, 4, 3, and minus 1, 1. And if you do that, you get 5, 5. 
And again, just as before, you want to write this in terms of your basis vectors, 3, 2, and minus 1, 1. So it's a times 3, 2 plus b times minus 1, 1. And just as before, you just need to row reduce the matrix 3, 2, minus 1, 1, 5, 5. And I'm not going to do this again because it turns out it's the exact same process. You use the exact same row reductions because, notice, this matrix is actually the same as before. And it's just a matrix formed by uh, you know, putting the columns of B together. So if you do that after a while, you should get, I think, a 1, 0, 0, 1, and 2, 1 which tells you the answer is 2 times 3, 2 plus 1 times minus 1, 1. And therefore, the second column of your matrix is 2, 1, which tells you in the end what is the B matrix of A is just the result you get by putting those two vectors together Let's just write it as follows. So A, B equals to 1 minus 2, 2, 1. And you see it's a very similar process to finding matrices of linear transformations. For linear transformations, for every vector, you evaluate T of that vector, and you express it in terms of the vectors you found. So, just a couple of notes, though. First of all, here we did it the slow way. There's actually a much faster way to do this. So remember, if you put the, made the vectors in B together, you get what's called the change of coordinates matrix. PB, which is 3, 2, minus 1, 1. And notice what we really did in this problem. For example, here, we tried to solve, you know, PB of what and what gives you 5, 0. Similarly here, PB of what and what gives you 5, 5. So really, all we needed to find the following, namely PB of what, 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 gives you 5, 0, and PB of what, what, gives you 5, 5. And so really, all you needed to do is to take PB in the first column, and, you know, A of the first vector, A of the second vector, which is just, you know, 1 minus 2, two sorry. Yeah, no, which is 3, 2, minus 1, 1, and 5, 5, 0, 5, and just row reduce it so that the left-hand side is the reduced row echelon form, which here means the identity matrix. I and A, B. And that just reflects that in both cases, we use the exact same uh, row, uh, you know, row reductions. Because notice, in fact, in those two things, again, the stuff I erase in here, we started out with the same matrix, which is PB. It's just the right-hand side that changed a bit. And we tried to make the left-hand side be the identity matrix, which is precisely what we have here. And also, I want to emphasize this because I think this is important. So we had PB and then 5055, and it gave us I and AB. Okay. Now, how did we find this matrix? We applied A to every basis vector. So this was really A of, let's see, um, 3, 2. And this was A of minus 1, 1. 
And remember, PB was just a matrix by putting all the vectors in B together. So notice, this thing is just the same as A applied to the matrix 3, 2, <coughs> minus 1, 1, which is really A, P, B. Because you know, this is precisely the matrix P. And what did we do? Well, really, we just tried to invert it. So really, A, B is the result of inverting P, B applied to this matrix 5, 5, 0, 5. Which was, what was this matrix? A of this, so A of PB. So this is really cool. To find the matrix, the B matrix of A, we did something similar to diagonalization. We, this is called conjugation by PB. And this is why, you know, uh, we have this identity, you know, the, uh, what's called the B matrix of A is just PBA, PB inverse. This is one cool thing where sort of diagonalization comes in. And the real reason why this is important is as follows. In fact, let me try to do it on this last one. Suppose A is 7 minus 4 and 2, 1. And B is 1 minus 1 and 1 minus 2. And I already want to tell you from the outset, those ones will be our eigenvectors of A. So the question is, what happens to the matrix of A if B is, you know, the, um, sorry, if B is, uh, consists of eigenvectors? Well, let's do that. Let's calculate A of 1 minus 1. Well, that's 7, 2, minus 4, 1, and 1 minus 1. If you do that, turns out it's 5 minus 5. And now, how can you write it in terms of those vectors? Well, it is indeed 5 times 1 minus 1 plus 0 times 1 minus 2. And indeed, the column here becomes 5, 0, the first column of the B matrix. Now, A of 1 minus 2, that is 7, 2, minus 4, 1, of 1 minus 2, and that's 3 minus 6. And again, write it in terms of your basis vectors, 3 times 1 minus 1, sorry, 0 times 1 minus 1, Woo! one second. Not expected. Ah, no. Okay. Um, <laughs> 0 times 1 minus 1 plus 3 times 1 minus 2. And therefore, the second column becomes 0, 3. Which means that the B matrix of A is 5, 0, 0, 3. So you see. What made this work is that, you know, we had eigenvectors. So this is an eigenvector with eigenvalue 5. This is an eigenvector with eigenvalue 3. And the point is, if B consists of eigenvectors of A, so if B is a basis of eigenvectors, then in fact, the B matrix of A is diagonal. So this is why I think B matrices are nice. So if you ever had the question, find a basis such that the B matrix of A is diagonal, well, just choose the eigenbasis, a basis consisting of eigenvectors. And I think it's surprising, it shouldn't surprise you too much if you have, if you remember this identity, well, look, if P is, uh, or if PB consists of eigenvectors, then you literally get that P inverse AP is diagonal. So P inverse AP is D, but that you can just rewrite as A is PD, P inverse, which is literally our, you know, our, uh, our condition for diagonalizability. So that's really cool. 
All right, I hope you like this little excursion into B matrices. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.